What is up everyone? Welcome back to Undialed. Today is a video for the beginners. Today we're going to be teaching you how to basically go from not being able to hit a rail to comfortably being able to hit it like a little bit. I feel like that's like a really pivotal point in hitting rails because at least for me, it was really scary initially taking those first steps of being like, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to grind the rail. So today I'm going to help you with making that transition from not being able to grind to being able to grind a little bit easier. So the grind that we're going to be learning today is probably the most basic grind out of them all, and that is a backside board slide. And before we get into learning any sort of grinds, I just want to go over what backside and frontside mean. And before I get too into it, it's all determined on whether you're goofy or regular. So you need to figure out if you're goofy or regular. Goofy people are right foot forward, regular people are left foot forward. I'm goofy, so I'm going to be saying all goofy terms in this video. If you're regular, just take what I say, but backwards. But basically, backside and frontside is all just determined on what side of you the obstacle is. So for example, if I roll up to a rail, and you can see it is on my backside, no matter what grind I jump into on this rail, it'll be a backside grind. So I can do a backside board, I could do a backside lip slide, I could do a backside 50-50, it's all backside because the rail is on my backside when I approach it. Now front side is the exact same thing, except reversed. Now I'm not going to be teaching you any front side grinds in this video, but it's basically the same thing. If the obstacle is on your front side when you're approaching it, then it makes it a front side grind. Regardless of what the grind is, it's still going to be a front side grind. So now that we have that figured out, let's work on backside board slide, which means you approach the rail with the rail on your back side. So I have this rail right here in the middle of my street, and this rail is a pretty long rail. It's the whole 20 feet long. Most rails at your skate park are gonna be between eight and 10 feet long and might have some crazy kinks in it or whatnot. But right now we're gonna talk about goals. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because if you expect to hit an entire rail your first session, you are really, really good if you pull it off. But, but in all reality, you're probably gonna hit a little bit of the rail and that's about it. So we're gonna talk about goals. I remember the first time that I ever grinded a scooter, I grinded like this much of the rail. I did barely anything. It was more just of a, a little chink than anything. And that's where you're gonna to have to start, really. You're gonna to have to start by basically just hitting tiny portions of the rail and over time you can make the distance farther and farther and farther and farther. But be realistic with yourself. Don't set an insane goal of grinding this super, super long rail if you can't grind it all because you're just gonna be upset at the end of the day because tricks like this take practice and they take hours in the skate park just learning. So before we get on the rail, I wanna point out one more thing. All right, so for this next step, we're gonna be inside. You're probably thinking, why do we need to be inside for a board slide tutorial or a grinding tutorial? Well, we're in here for two reasons. And those two reasons are socks, and hard floor. You can either have a tile floor or a wood floor, it doesn't really matter, it just cannot be carpet. And I'm gonna show you guys something that you all have probably done inside of your house. And that thing is this. I'm sure all of you guys have slid in on the floor before. So you basically run and then you jump and then you hold the position and you basically slide across the floor. And grinding on a rail is basically the exact same thing, except your scooter deck is your socks. And you're running, is, is the wheels and the floor is the rail. So we're almost at the point where we can grind this rail, but we're gonna talk about body position next. So when you ran and slid on the floor inside of your kitchen, you notice that you put your weight a little bit more forward. And that's exactly what you have to do on a rail. If you lean too far back, you're gonna slip out and potentially hurt your back. If you lean too far forward, you're just gonna fall over your scooter. But you have to find the perfect balance spot that is very similar as when you're sliding on your feet in the kitchen as to when you're grinding on a rail. It's basically keeping your momentum going forward and staying over basically your knees and your feet. It's really important to find out that position and that position is gonna be really difficult at first to figure out. But once you figure it out, your muscle memory will build and you'll be able to get into that position and hold it for pretty much as long as you want. So now we're gonna talk about getting onto the rail. So when you grind a rail, you don't want to be in this position. You want to be exactly perpendicular to the rail. 
you want to basically create a T shape with the rail being one of the crosses and your scooter deck being the other. So that way you can stay perfectly balanced on it. So when I first had the idea of start grinding my scooter, I always saw people at the skate park doing this. They were always rubbing their deck against whatever they were grinding. And it was really confusing to me because I wondered like, why are they doing this? My thought was, if you actually go and you grind the rail, you're gonna have so much more weight on it than with your hands, so you won't really be able to tell if it's sticky or not. But what I've found after being able to grind rails and now using my hands to check out rails beforehand, all they're really looking for and all you should look for is little imperfections in the rail that potentially might hang you up. If, they're, if you're sliding your scooter across with not that much weight on it and you're getting stuck and it's, it's hard to push through, it, chances are it's gonna be pretty sticky when you jump onto it yourself. So you wanna apply some wax and then make sure that it is a really smooth, buttery feeling. And once you're there, you shouldn't have any hangups at all. All right, so if you're still a little bit hesitant rolling up to the rail and just jumping into it, here's a little tip to make that a little bit easier. So what you can do is before you even jump onto it at all, you can just place your scooter on top of the rail and basically use your back foot to help push you along. What this will do is it'll help you get a better feel of what the rail is like. Now the next thing that you wanna do that's a step beyond that is you wanna try foot planting onto the rail. And that looks like this. The reason that this is easier is because when you step onto the rail, you're automatically putting your body position into the exact place it needs to be. It's kind of like you're stepping into the position. So once you're at the point where you're able to foot plant onto the rail, pretty much every shot, and when you foot plant on, you feel stable and you don't feel too unbalanced, it's now time to jump onto the rail with two feet. I'm assuming when you're foot planting onto the rail, you're just doing the very end of it. You aren't doing the whole thing because that could maybe even be harder. So what you want to do is you, you really just want to try putting your other foot on and start grinding the exact same distance that you were foot planning. Then what you want to do is you want to work on the goals. You want to start making longer and longer and longer goals until you're able to do the entire rail. So I'll show you what that looks like. Once you start challenging yourself going longer and longer and longer, challenge yourself with other rails. Don't be scared of circle rails. Don't be scared of weird shaped rails. Don't be scared of square rails. Try to attack every single rail that you can see and that you can jump on top of because the more rails that you're able to do, the more confident you're gonna be towards the trick. Anyway guys, this video was intended for beginners that are not able to board slide and want to be able to board slide. If you're an experienced rider, then most of these tips were probably a little bit easy for you, but I appreciate you watching. Anyway guys, I want you to have an awesome day. Make sure to go to undialed.co and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.